What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, uh, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial. So yesterday I came out with a video where I showed you how to use SubD. It's a subdivide plugin that's designed to help you create organic shapes in SketchUp. And uh, one of the things you may have noticed about that video, first of all, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. I kind of put a video of myself talking in the corner in addition to actually working on the SketchUp models. And I'm just trying to make the channel a little bit more personable. I really want to have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you guys about SketchUp and stuff like that. And I feel like kind of hiding behind a microphone maybe isn't helping with that. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you like that. If you didn't like that, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Um, I really want to just keep bringing you great SketchUp content and I'd love to know what you think. But let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So um, we talked a little bit about using uh, Sub D yesterday um, to create more organic shapes. And I just want to talk a little bit about an issue that I started having in there. Because uh, one of the examples that I've seen people do um, when they're um, just kind of demonstrating the way the software works is they draw kind of this L-shaped box and then they use subdivide to create kind of a or sub D to create kind of this curve just like this you see how this is a curve shape between these two objects um, so I was like okay yeah that's cool let's go ahead and do that and then uh, I clicked on mine and it looked like this so no matter how much I subdivided it, I was getting this extra like curve along here. Like it was subdividing everything and not keeping anything in place. And it took me a while to figure it out, um, you know, because I was like, why, why is this doing this? Why don't I just get this nice shape? And the reason why, and it's something that's really going to be important when you work with this uh, extension, is you're going to have to use the crease function. So what the crease function does is basically it allows you to come in here and tell uh, sub D there's some faces that you don't touch or some some points or some lines and so uh, I actually had to go watch a video from 3d Basecamp where the instructor used uh, this function and it was about quad face modeling I'll link to it down below uh, in order to figure this out but basically what you're gonna do is when you have the sub D plugin uh, installed that you're gonna have this option over here called the crease tool what the crease tool is gonna do is it's gonna keep objects from moving basically so like for example if I come in here and I select this line I can activate the crease tool and set the amount that I want to crease it so like in this case if I drag it up to positive one um, you can see first of all you see how it turns a little bit red right in here that's sub D telling you that something's creased so there's two different ways you can uh, crease objects you can crease points or you can crease lines and you can see how I use shift click to select these two points but if I go ahead and set these points to one and, and then come outside and run sub D what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep that line in place so you see how it's subdividing the bottom down here but not this top because I basically creased it all right, so those points are really important when you do this. So, um, so when you come in here and you set these two points, it's basically telling you, or you're basically telling it, don't move these points at all um, when you do the whole subdivision process. And so you can come in here and you can do the same thing on these two corners right here. So you can come in and you can set those to one. And then what that's going to do now when I run sub D is it's going to give you that nice curve that we were looking for so you see how this kind of uh, this creates exactly this curve shape that we wanted but we basically told it okay you can subdivide everything but take th these four points and don't crease them at all so let's go through here and I'll give you another example so this is an example I did with a pair of cylinders and so you've got these two cylinders right here, right? And this, this one is just a stock cylinder, no crease, no anything type object, right? So if I come in here and I just uh, run sub D on it, you can see what it does. And I've got it all the way to full on subdivisions, but you can see that it pulls in all the points um, in the lines along the perimeter on the top and the bottom. So instead of giving us kind of a, uh, Instead of giving us kind of an object with a base that kind of tapers up top, it's basically just tapering the whole thing. Okay, so what I did on this one, um, instead of doing it this way where just everything uh, kind of comes in here and gets subdivided, what I did is I created a copy of this face from the bottom and I used the move tool to move it up a little bit. So I just used copy mode and I moved a piece of this just like this. And then what I did is I used crease mode 
um, and I came in here and I selected this piece so all the way around uh, drag a box across it and just do this whole thing and then basically what I did is I set crease on all these lines to one so what that means is I basically told it you've got this line that runs around this perimeter here keep this in place and so then what you do is you come in here and you run sub D and what it's gonna do is oops do it again So you can see what it does is it creates this cool kind of tapered shape right here, um, almost like you're drawing like a thermos or something like that. But the point is it kept this line in place and then it subdivided everything else. So you can see how it kind of rounded the bottom piece off and kind of subdivided the spaces in here um, and then rounded this top piece off, but it kept this in place. You know, another example where you can do this is if you take a box so, I mean, the most basic sub D example is if you select this box and then you subdivide it and you subdivide it all the way to its final point, what it's going to do is it's going to create a sphere, right? Because it subdivides all of these faces around this whole perimeter. Well, if you come in here with a box like this and you just set this one line and these points, and again, you can use that by activating the crease tool and clicking on these points and the line as well and you can just set these to one now if you subdivide it what it's going to do is it's going to keep this line in place and then it's going to subdivide everything else so you've got more of like a teardrop shape in here and so again this is more of a principle video i know a whole um you guys probably aren't out there trying to model a teardrop shape but basically what you can learn by doing this is how to keep how to keep points in place when using this extension so because one, one of the things, uh, this working with this extension isn't like drawing lines down to like the, you know, to the, the uh, furthest detail or anything like that. This is, this is a lot more almost like sculpting or almost like art because you're coming in here and you're trying to kind of uh, figure out what the extension is going to do and kind of coax it into the direction that you want it to go. So like, for example, you know, I, I use this example in my original video, but if you take this kind of like frame box like this and you subdivide it all the way down, what it's going to do is it's going to create, you know, this kind of cool curved box shape that's very organic and stuff like that. But if you come in here, so let's say you don't want the base of this to be round, you want the base of this to stay square, what you do is you come in here and you take all the all the points on this line down here and you crease them to one just like that and then if you come in here and subdivide this one it's going to do the same thing as it does over here but it's going to keep the base in place so you can see what that did is it subdivides everything up top to create kind of this cool arching shape but it kept all the points in place down here at the bottom and uh you know, I mean, this this is definitely an interesting extension to work with. There's a lot of nuances, you know, I mean, you're better off modeling in quads. You know, I mean, it's just something where you're going to have a whole lot of trial and error. There's going to be a whole lot of practice makes perfect type things. And uh, you just have to be willing to try a bunch of different things. And also, I'm going to link to this down below, but there's a section in the Sketchication forum specifically designed for this extension. So you can go in there and ask questions. And uh, the people there are really cool. They're really knowledgeable uh, the developer the plugin even hangs out in there so if you have a question or an issue um, generally speaking from everything I've seen he just loves working on problems and stuff in SketchUp so he definitely help you out but just uh, don't expect it to be perfect the first time around so um, you know I'd love to see I, I'd love to have you guys leave a comment below let me know if this extension is something you've tried if it's something you're interested in also what kind of tutorials and stuff you'd like to see from it so um, I Again, one of the things I love about this uh, channel is it's kind of a conversation about SketchUp, and I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, that said, uh, if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. Uh, if you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button. And finally, if you're looking to support what I do, uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put a link to that in the notes below as well. You know, every, every little bit helps, and even if it's like a dollar a month, just please consider supporting me and uh, help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. So in any case, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and uh, I guess I'll catch you in the next video. So thanks, guys.